Hello and welcome back to On the Timeline. I'm Emma Connolly. And I'm Samantha Vassallo. Let's get into it. Today, we're talking about the timeline on Harley Quinn. But quick disclaimer, she knows nothing and I know everything. So this is going to be a little bit interesting. I have just a brief history on the character herself because really I had to look everything up because I genuinely knew nothing. I'm not a big superhero girl and the only superhero movies I've watched are all Marvel, no DC. So I didn't know anything. So Harley Quinn debuted in September of 1992 in the DC animated comic series batman the animated series interesting interesting. so in that series she was like supposed to be the comic relief for the joker and they got in fights and i guess it was just kind of cute and fun yeah but her real name was supposed to be harleen quinzel which i just i don't know quinzel quinzel see i told you i don't know anything (laughs) but then she made her like official entrance like acceptance into the dc universe in 1999's batman harley quinn by Paul Dini, Yavel Guchet, and Aaron Sald. So I'm going to read something from DC's website because I had to do some really basic research about the character, and I thought, I don't know, some of you guys might not really know anything. So this says, The multiverse would be a much less lively place without the hijinks and shenanigans of the fir- f- former Dr. <laughs> Harleen Quinzel. Harley Quinz- Quinzel. 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 Okay, okay, cut the camera. <laughs> okay, well, I'm here now because I got tired of listening to that. Um, just as she knows everything, uh, mm. I'm also a huge comic book fan. Um, hi, I'm Samuel Kander. I'm the producer of this show, um, and now I'm an anchor for it. Period. Hi, Sammy. Hey, how so are you? So I'm great. So where were we, Emma? Oh, yes, from DC's website. Um... So, yes, former Dr. Hyaline Quinzel, the one and only clown princess of crime. Uh, Sometimes love can make people do crazy things. Other times it drives them completely insane, such as the case with Harley Quinn, formerly Dr. Harleen Quinzel, a promising psychologist and intern at Arkham Asylum in Gotham City. Harleen was given the chance to get up close and personal with the Joker, an experience that wound up ending badly. Harleen became obsessed with her subject, and after falling madly in love with the clown, Prince of Crime, she helped him escape the asylum. And that's pretty much the gist in every Mm -hmm. adaptation. Uh, That's just sort of how it goes. Um, Changes from time to time, especially what comes next. And so her love for the Joker inspired Harleen to adopt a new identity, that of Harley Quinn, the Joker's sidekick slash love interest, whether he wanted one or not. Most of the time, he did not. Uh, In time, Harley came to realize the Joker was holding her back, and she struck out on her own. She became an entrepreneur and a member of several slightly less than reputable super teams, including the Suicide Squad, Gotham City's all-girl gang in the Gotham City Sirens, and Traveling Sideshow. Along the way, Harley has become one of the most popular supervillains in the DC Universe, thanks in part to her versatility, charisma, and cheery but deranged outlook on life. Uh, after all, Harley would say, if you're going to go a little crazy, you may as well sit back and enjoy the ride. So, DC, I am noticing a huge lack of domestic here on your website. That's that's a big yes. part of it Yeah, that kind of gets glossed over. Uh, I feel like in general, too, and, you know, part of, like, this whole thing that I'm going to go over a little bit later is that, you know, there's the whole relationship, too, between, like, her and Ivy. And yeah. it just gets thrown away because, like, it's, like, so much normalized for it to be, like, a guy and a girl. And then mm. not only that, but, like, Joker and Harley Quinn, even though it kind of is this, like, a like domestic relationship that he's absolutely hor- horrible to her in every yeah. single, like, adaptation. And I'm sure we'll get into it later, but, like, Ivy, the whole part of that process, like, the relationship between Harley and Ivy is that sort of rehabilitation from a toxic Mm -hmm. relationship, Ivy being there for, as, at first, a friend, but eventually a love interest and a companion, and in some adaptations, Mm -hmm. uh, married. Yeah. So, what do you you have about Harley Quinn? So, what I'm going to be talking about is the most recent um, adoptions into movie and TV, and there's been three, one that hasn't come out yet, and two that have. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you've seen the Suicide Squad movies with Margot Robbie. I've only seen, I've seen the first one, I saw parts of of Birds of Prey, and I've seen the second one. I've unfortunately seen the 2016 Suicide Squad. (laughs) Um, wish I could unsee it. Um, which I don't know if you've seen recently. I saw a clip where it was like the one of the first trailers, complete tonal shift 
from how the movie actually came out. Yeah. The the one of the original trailers is like this super somber music, and it's crazy how far it went. Mm-hmm. And I I've seen all of Birds of Prey. I saw it when it came out in theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, which made me really happy to see that they were going in a more I don't say positive direction with Margot Robbie's character, yeah, but like but... a more positive direction mm-hmm. with Margot Robbie's character. Yeah. Well, the first Suicide Squad movie was released in 2016 and it had a 26 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you remember like the whole controversy with the shorts? Yes. Yes like insane when they was it shorter or longer in the trailer i i think it was shorter right i believe it was shorter i don't fully remember yeah. the sides of it i just i remember i don't know it was a whole mess it was um, a whole mess basically in the trailer like the shorts that harley quinn was wearing were either longer or shorter than they were in the movie and i think just, shorter actually I think now shorter. that i really think about it i'm pretty sure it's shorter. and i think it just like sparked a lot of controversy in the trailer because why were her they were literally like bikini bottoms yeah. if i remember the trailer properly and then when they extended them people were like what so i mean it's weird it's yeah a weird situation i think especially with her being in suicide squad that comes a lot from the new 52 where she was a change character that's where mm-hmm. they really that's when in my opinion, most of around that turn where Harley became a very independent character yeah. in the comics. Um, but she was also a very sexualized character mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, the New 52 in general was extremely sexualized. Yeah. Um, and that run in the comics, I remember, like, she just has, she just sleeps with Deadshot yeah. for no reason. Oh, like, it's weird. it's probably stemming from that, but... I feel like, you know, like with any female character in a superhero movie they're obviously always over sexualized in some sense or some way but it's just like sad to see that you have a character who's over sexualized is in an uh, abusive relationship and it's being glossed over all the time yeah. it's just very frustrating um in general and so um going back to the movies with margot robbie she had birds of prey in 2022 i'm sorry 2020 and then suicide squad in 2021 Mm -hmm. um and she's like questionable to return but she did say that if she was to return she would push for a relationship between her and ivy saying quote i've been pushing for that for years cannot tell you how hard i've been pushing for that i want that too and I think that that's important for Margot Robbie to really be pushing for that stance yeah. and making sure that Harley gets the relationship that not only she needs, but that would present a better um, person out mm-hmm. to the public. And I, it, Harley and Poison Ivy's relationship was one of the earliest examples of LGBTQ mm-hmm. um, examples in DC Comics. I mean, aside from one or two others, it was one of... I believe the first few that really gained traction yeah. and has led to a lot of other um, a diversity in comics. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty happy to see that Margot yes. Robbie has been advocating for this. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. So the second main show, oh, there she is. There she is. There she is on my paper. You can't see, but I can. Um, so the second one is the HBO Max Harley Quinn cartoon. Have you seen this? Yes. I love this show this so much. This is such a good show. Such a good show. It's like total like TVMA, like inappropriate at all times. Yeah. But it's so funny. And there's three seasons. The first one was released in 2019. Second one was released in 2020. The third one was released in 2022. And they just had a Valentine's Day special yeah. as well. I it is definitely one of my fra- uh, favorite adaptations. I think mm-hmm. it's I can't remember it was one of it, it has had in its wake a couple other like adult superhero yeah. cartoons um mm-hmm. and I don't think any of them have done it as well as this. Another one example comes to mind on yeah. HBO Max. Velma does not do it does as well it. as Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is such a good show and it's it has awareness to a degree that's not annoying. Yes it, it, yes, it takes every character to their extreme, but not in a way that is overbearing or annoying at all. Yes. They're caricatures of like Batman and Bane and Joker, but they're not overbearing. They don't mm-hmm. overload what is actually important, and that's yeah. the story. And um, I think it's nice too because they don't just look at the characters like the way that they've always been portrayed. They definitely take a twist on each character and try to show, you know, oh, maybe they're not as bad as mm-hmm. they seem. Or maybe they're not the superhero at the end of the day. And I think that that's something I really appreciate from the show. Yeah. And it's just funny. Yes. Like, 
flat out like I laugh every single time I always tell my friends you know if you're having a bad day like watch the bachelorette episode like that's my favorite episode Mm -hmm. ever it's so funny and I just like love it I love the relationship that they put together between her and um Harley Quinn and Ivy Mm -hmm. I love um the shark guy what's his name uh, King, King Shark. Shark. Love King Shark. Very funny. So iconic. Bane is absolutely hilarious. Like, he just, he has my heart, Bane. And just such a good cast of recurring characters. Mm-hmm. A lot of, like, B-listers with, like, Dr. Psycho yeah. and King Shark. Uh, Kite Man, I, who is, <laughs> I love Kite Man. <laughs> Even before Kite the Man. show, Kite Man is such a funny character. Uh, mm-hmm. Hell yeah. If hell you know yeah. it, you know it. Um, no, such a great show. If you haven't watched it, do yourself a favor, go watch it. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not a superhero fan, yeah. it's just a good show. Mm-hmm. It's just a good comedy. Yeah, for sure. And the last one is up. Oh, there's my photo of them. That you can't see you it. Can't we see can see it again, but we can. Um, and now we have Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this movie, guys. I just, oh my gosh. I I love Joker, not in the way that like. Uh, what film bros do with mm-hmm. like American Psycho? I Joker was just one of when I first like started enjoying movies. It was mm-hmm. one of the, it came out at the time, and I was it was one of my favorites, and I still like it a lot. And when I heard that Lady Gaga was going to be Harley Quinn, mm-hmm. I was like, this ain't gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really doubted Lady Gaga, but these Good-bye. new images. We got another photo here. You got another. You can't see it, <laughs> but. It what just, do you how do you feel about this i just think it's just like i mean i love harley quinn i dress up as her every year for halloween mm-hmm. and when i saw this costume i go great i got my costume for next year tip tap done like it's just so good it's so pretty i think it's conservative in the way that it needs to be but it also just shows that little spunk that mm-hmm. she has because obviously we wouldn't want like the short short situation like we did in suicide squad but I, th- I really like it a lot. I think it's cute. It, it's a cute outfit. It's, it screams Harley Quinn without being... It fits in the sort of the way that, like, uh, the Batman went and Joker went. This the And I get all the way back to Nolan, the idea of these people existing mm-hmm. in our world and how they would sort of look like that. They went spot on without it yeah. being too crazy. And... I gotta be honest, I doubted it till I saw these images and the... Were they lead clips or were they actual promotional clips? I know these... I think all of these photos were leaked and then all the videos of her singing too, those were all completely mm, okay. leaked. I don't know if you... Have you seen the videos of her singing? I haven't seen the ones of her singing, no. Oh my gosh. It's like... It's it's not like of her, but it's just people on in like outside their apartments in New York City mm-hmm. just having their like video on and you can hear her down the street and it's like all jazzy theme that's cool and it's very cool and I'm super duper excited and I just like I I, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the movie it's like full <laughs> I'm gonna butcher it for deluxe or whatever uh but it, folly ado folly ado I hate the French <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but you know, uh, thank you, producer Emma. Thank Let's you, see. Producer Emma. Oh wow! In parentheses. Fake and too. too fake. Yeah, too fake. The fake delusion. Oh, cool. I think maybe it's all in his head. That's my theory for the movie. I mean, as we see in the first film, yeah. was all in his head. It'd be really interesting to see if it isn't. I don't think for this movie they're going to go the traditional route. I don't I don't see Joaquin Phoenix's Joker as being a abuser. Um mm-hmm. I think um I'm trying to think of what depiction. Uh uh Telltale are you familiar with Telltale Games depiction mm-hmm. of No, I'm not. So Telltale Games, the people who make the Walking Dead game, which is really fun. Um sort of I don't want to call it choose your own adventure, but that's like what it is. Your choices affect the mm-hmm. plot. Um, and the way that relationship, um, she was, Harley Quinn was introduced in the second chapter. And in that, she was a lot more of the Joker than the Joker was. Interesting. So she was a lot more of the driving factor of chaos. She was working with Bane, uh, Mr. Freeze, and one of the characters, I can't remember which one, but she was the like driving factor. And, um, in the game, the Joker is pitted between batman and harley quinn and like what decisions to make so i honestly kind of see it going that, that way, way where she's more 
Mm -hmm. the primary factor in yeah. driving him to go further and further. Well, have you seen that one clip, too, of her, like, walking up the stairs? Yes, yes. where the woman's like, yeah, uh, she, you're going to you're hell. You're going to hell, and she, like, makes out with, well, just doesn't make out, just, like, kisses her. But mm -hmm. I feel like that's very, like, kind of yeah. that vibe, because it's, like, Joker's just, like, standing off to the side in that mm -hmm. clip, and she's the one doing it. She's the one, like, you know, pushing, you know, other people in that area to their limits and herself to that limit so i think that's an yeah. interesting take. i don't know what her motivations are going to be yeah. but i definitely see all signs yeah. of well obviously too they start in the hospital in arkham because yeah. they had that one actual photo for promotion where she was on the ground and so mm -hmm. to me i'm like she's gonna fall into the acid like what's gonna what's true gonna pop we didn't even that? talk about that the, yeah. the difference of her falling in the acid not falling in the acid no i great question i think I don't think she's going to fall in the acid. I don't think with this depiction she's going to fall in the acid. I think this is too, what's it, noir. I think mm -hmm. Joker's too noir for her to fall in acid. I, I think uh, they're going to stick with this makeup look, at least for the time being. I'd be interested to see where they go with it. Mm -hmm. um, but, no, I'm I'm really excited for it now. Um, Me too. When is it being released? October 4th, 2024. You better is... be in theaters. That's like a year and a half. God, that is a year and a half <laughs> from really now. Far Jeez. Away. Well, that's like that's six years almost on the dot from the original movie because the original really? movie was 2018 hmm. or was it 2019? Mm. Please let me know. I don't remember off the top yeah, of my head. Do I? I want to say no. It was 19. It was, it was 19. 19. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's 19. I feel like this has been the timeline for Harley Quinn. Uh, for News 4 Entertainment, I'm Samuel Kander. And I'm Samantha Vassallo. And I'm Emma Connolly. You stay out of this, Connolly. <laughs> Sammy gets to eat.